Hey my dudes, my name is Cecilia and welcome to my kitchen here in Stockholm, Sweden. Today is the 10th day of our 12 days of Christmas and we are making fransk nougat. This is a French nougat and yes, I did translate the title just for the sake of having all my titles be in Swedish, but it is a very popular Christmas treat here in Sweden, so I feel justified. This is arguably the most difficult and technically advanced recipe in this series. You have to control two different change your life hot sugar syrups at the same time while you're whipping egg whites. It's just a whole lot going on, so definitely make sure you've watched this video several times, and I'm not just saying that for the views, but definitely if you're going to make this, read the recipe, watch the video, read the recipe, watch the video. And if you've never done any sort of candy making, I honestly wouldn't attempt this by myself. I would get a friend to help me out so that you have multiple eyes controlling the syrup. It is so worth it though. These are so incredibly delicious and it's not actually hard. It's just, you have to pay attention to a lot of things all at the same time and everything is super hot. So now that you've been forewarned and I've really sold you on making this, let's get started. <laughs> to begin, oil a casserole dish. This one is already nonstick, but I'm oiling it anyways because nougat is so sticky. Also, you could use spray fat, but as usual, I don't have any, so I'm brushing the oil on. Cut a piece of parchment paper to fit the pan and line it. Oil the parchment and set the form to the side. Zest one lemon and set that to the side. Next, toast a mixture of pecans, pistachios, and hazelnuts in the oven until they are a light golden brown. Once they are done, open up the oven door to release the heat, but leave the nuts in the warm oven so they will still be warm, but not like hot, hot when they go into the nougat later. I like to prop the oven door open with a wooden spoon and leave them in the warm oven until it's time to add them in. Into a pot, pour in 125 grams of water, 415 grams of sugar, and 90 grams of glucose. In a separate pot, pour in 250 grams of honey. Into the bowl of your stand mixer, pour in 50 grams of egg white. I have my station set up for what I hope is success. Over here off camera is my pot that had the sugar, water, and glucose. Uh, it's on my actual stovetop, and then on my induction here, I have my honey. And then here is my stand mixer with my egg white. And then I have 20 grams of sugar that will go in when I start whipping. And my zest is ready to go, and my nuts are in the oven. I have my heat proof spatula. This is super, super important. And then I also have my thermometer. This is arguably the most important piece of equipment here, besides the stand mixer. You cannot do this without a stand mixer. You cannot do this with a hand blender. Don't ask, you need a stand mixer. And then I also have a paddle attachment because we will be switching to the paddle attachment. So let's get started. Boil the sugar and glucose mixture until it reaches 114 degrees Celsius or 237 degrees Fahrenheit. As soon as it reaches that temperature, pour the sugar into the egg whites and begin whipping them. I whip on high because my stand mixer has a hard time catching the whites. Try medium high first. You don't want to whip to stiff peaks before pouring the syrups in. Begin boiling the honey as soon as you've started whipping the whites. Boil until it reaches 122 degrees Celsius or 252 degrees Fahrenheit. Immediately pour the honey into the egg whites. Pour in a thin, even stream. This whole time, the sugar and glucose syrup has still been cooking. Take it to 145 degrees Celsius or 293 degrees Fahrenheit. As soon as it hits that temperature, pour it into the mixer. Again, pour in a thin, steady stream. Let whip on high for two minutes. After two minutes, switch out the whisk attachment for the paddle attachment and continue mixing on high for another three minutes. After three minutes, add in the lemon zest and the warm nuts. Mix just until all the nuts and zest are evenly dispersed. You absolutely do not want to wait until the mixture is cool in the bowl to pour it out. It must be hot. It will set like cement in the bowl and will be impossible to get out if it isn't. I just want to let you guys know while I'm doing this that this part, like my paddle attachment, is metal. And it's so hot. It 
it's like burning my fingers. But as we say, what are fingers for? Fingers are for burning. This is super hot as well. Wah! Good thing this is so delicious. This is like marshmallow meets caramel. Marshmallow and caramel goes to hell. Have fun. <laughs> it's super delicious though. So annoying to make, but really delicious. Although it is less annoying in my opinion than like tempering chocolate. So there's that. Boom, we did it. See, that was only mildly incredibly difficult. So <laughs> I've done this three times this week and every time I do it, I'm just like, <sighs> don't let that deter you though. It's a fun project. Don't burn yourself. <laughs> now this just needs to be put to the side for around 24 hours out in room temperature. Do not put it in the fridge. It will get rock hard and then you'll be miserable. Just let it sit out and chill. Our nougat has been crystallizing for about 24 hours now at room temperature. That's important. Do not put it in the fridge. We have our large pastry chef knife here and it is extremely dull. This is my best friend. I love this and remember it's dull for a reason. And one of the reasons is cutting through candy, which is what we're doing today. So let's see if we can pop this bad boy out. It's just a little stubborn, but it will move. There we go. Eventually like that. There we go. Bloop. Now I have a little bit of oil and a pastry brush and I'm just going to brush the oil onto my knife. I'm doing this because I don't have spray fat. The trick to cutting nougat is to not press in but to saw. So we're gonna go like this and I wanna cut this into quarters first. Also, the longer you hold it in one position, the more likely it is to get sticky. See that? That's cause I like accidentally paused. Also, nougat is just a patience thing. It is annoying, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> and then the last little bit you can. Okay, there we go. Oh my God. <gasps> Look at that. It looks so good. Oh, that's so exciting. Wow. I love it. Okay. Also important. This loves to like re stick together. So take a piece of parchment and put it to the side like that so that you can move this and continue working on the other piece. Let's put you back in the middle. Okay. See, it's not actually stuck. I just had to go in with my knife and just kind of like get underneath it. If you're looking at me and you're like, Cecilia, there has to be a better way. I have done this at multiple restaurants and bakeries and we always just do it like this. So like, you know, sometimes stuff is just labor <laughs> intensive. All right, nice. And we turn and I'm moving them as I cut them. So they're not in my way and they don't stick to the board. These are so beautiful. I'm dying. I'm also dying. Cause like by the time I cut all of these, I'm going to be exhausted. Oh my God. The speed also helps keep it from sticking. When I was working full time, especially in restaurants, but also sometimes in bakeries, there were days when like my entire shift was like, here are two, full-sized slabs of nougat or caramel, cut all of them, wrap all of them, go home. <laughs> and you're just like, all right, maybe there's a reason I have the beginnings of carpal tunnel. Okay. I feel like I'm not really selling this nougat to you guys. I'm like, it's difficult to cut. It's really difficult to make. It's going to give you carpal tunnel and you're going to get burned and go insane trying to make it. But honestly, it's so delicious. It's worth it. You know how when you're wearing high heels and it's like beauty is pain. That's what these are. Beauty is pain, boys and girls. Like wearing high heels to the club. It's annoying, it's painful, but it's worth it. All right, wrapping time. To wrap these bad boys, take your papers and you're gonna lay them out. I like to lay out like six or eight at a time. A place for them to go and then you just pop them on here. And then you take one with your paper and I like to press it in 
so that like it sticks and then you just roll it around and then corner, twist and twist. Oh my God, look at that. I mean, it's like I'm like at the North Pole, you know, like don't I look like Mrs. Claus and then I'm just like making little stocking stuffers for the kids. <laughs> Maybe not, but. Okay, so one more time, fold the paper over, press it down so it sticks and then just wrap it around and twist and twist. Boom, boom, done. And then you just do that for all of them. <sighs> done. <laughs> oh, finally, okay. And I have one piece left, which is great because now I can actually eat it. What if it was bad? What if I just did all of that work and like this wasn't good? I would cry, I would cry, but I know it's gonna be good. Mmm, it's so chewy. I love that my lipstick came off on it. That's funny. Much chewy, much delicious. And the lemon, like you don't think it's gonna come through, but it really comes through. It just like freshens the whole thing up and the nuts are so good. Got open. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, then please like and subscribe. And I hope you have a good week and happy holidays. Hey,